as we have understood from the previous lecture in this lesson, our goal in this lesson is to integrate the REST API server that we have already developed together with the access to the MongoDB database. So uh, we will start with the REST API server that we built in the very first lesson in this module. And then having learned how to interact from our node application uh, to the MongoDB server using Mongoose, we're going to be uh, developing our REST API server further to integrate the entire uh, path between the client request coming into the server all the way to the corresponding database operation to be performed and then constructing and sending back the reply to the client from our server side. To get started, of course, first, go to the Confusion Server folder that we have already created in the very first exercise of this module in the REST API lesson. And then in the Confusion folder, uh, we have already built up the REST API server. Now, what we would be doing is to borrow the models that we developed in the previous exercise the dishes.js file that we developed in the previous exercise, copy it over to the Confusion Server um, project, and also install Bluebird Mongoose and another uh, module called as Mongoose Currency uh, to our project. So going to our Node.js folder, we first go into the Node Mongoose folder and we see that in the models subfolder of the node mongoose folder, we have the dishes.js file. I'm just going to copy the models folder and then go over to the confusion server folder and then simply paste the models folder in there. So once we do that, then the dishes.js file, which contains the schema and the model for the dishes document uh, are integrated into our REST API server. Of course, in order to make use of that, we need to install the Mongoose node module and a new uh, node module called as Mongoose currency into our project. So going to the terminal in the Confusion server uh, project. So um, make sure that your um, terminal or the command window is in the Confusion server project where you develop the REST API uh, earlier. And in this project, let's install. So we'll do npm install mongoose and then a new node module called as mongoose currency. The mongoose currency node module adds in another schema type to our mongoose application. So the mongoose itself has certain already built-in schema types. We have seen the use of the number, the um, string, and the uh, boolean, and the array. Now, the mongoose currency adds in support for currency. Now, why would we need this currency support? So the mongoose currency um, module adds in a new type called as the currency type, which enables us to store a currency value. Since our dish is going to contain a price, so that is why I'm going to be using the Mongoose currency module here. Now, the uh, exercise here, we will illustrate the use of the Mongoose currency module. Uh, you can read more details about the Mongoose currency node module also in the um, documentation of that, a link to which is provided in the original resources. So now that we have installed these node modules, Mongoose and Mongoose currency, let's go to our um, application and set it up to communicate with the MongoDB server. Now, make sure that your MongoDB server is up and running. So um, uh, here you see that my MongoDB server is running in another terminal tab on my computer. Uh, if you are running it on a Windows machine, make sure it is uh, running in another command window of your um, Windows computer. Going to our application in the editor, we will first start with the app.js file. 
Now in the app.js file, this is where we built up our Express application earlier. Uh, but now this Express application is not connected to the backend MongoDB server. We're going to be making use of the Mongo's uh, module in order to establish the connection with the server. So going in here, I'm going to add in the require the Mongo's um, module here. So we'll say const Mongo's require Mongo's and then and then also, since we have copied over the models folder, which contains the dishes um, file, which uh, declares the di dishes schema and the model. So let me import the dishes. So we'll say require dot slash models dishes. So once we have completed that, now, of course, we need to establish the connection with the server. Uh, so set up URL MongoDB double slash localhost 27017 slash confusion, just like we did with the Mongoos exercise. And then we will say const connect mongoose connect URL. So this is exactly the same code that we used in the previous exercise. And then let's establish the connection. So we will say connect and then, and we'll say DB. do a console log saying connected correctly to server and we'll also handle the error here we'll just simply do a console log of the error that's it. And that will establish the connection to the server from our app.js file. So once we have established the connection to the server, then uh, let's open the dishes.js file from our models. Now in the dishes.js file, to make use of the mongoose currency that we have just um, node module that we have just installed. So we'll say require mongoose currency and say load type and mongoose. So what this will do is to load this new currency type into mongoose. Thereafter, we can say const currency mongoose types currency. That's it. So this new type, the currency type is added into mongoose and that will uh, add in a new type called currency. And then so I'm going to declare this um, uh, constant currency as the mongoose types currency so that I can make use of this in defining uh, the uh, schema in my application. Now, in uh, this case, the common schema will remain exactly the same as before, but the dish schema, as you recall from the db.json file, when you look at the structure of a dish document, you see that the dish document contains name, an image, which as you see here is a string, a category, a label, a price, which is a string type here, but uh, we will uh, declare this as a currency type, a featured, which as you expect is a Boolean variable, a description, which is a string, and then comments, which is nothing but an array of comments type. 
Now, so what we will now do is to extend the dish schema to support all these various um, properties or various fields in my JSON document. So we already have the name. So we, will, we already have the description in place. So we need to add in the next few uh, in there. We already have the comments, the array of uh, comments of the comment schema type there. So we will add in the next few. So the next one we will add in is the image type, which would be of the type string and we'll say re required true. We will, so this adds the image type. The next one that I will add is category, which is also the, a string type. The next one is label, which is also the string type. So I'm just since all these are of the same type and required, I'm just copying them in here. And then for the label, I would say that this is not required, but instead I will, I can also specify a default value if I want. So I can specify a default value like that. Default value is an empty string there. So if I don't specify required, I can simply specify default value here. Now, uh, in addition, the next uh, field that I'm going to introduce is the price field. The price field, I will declare the type as currency. Recall that we had declared the currency type earlier here by first requiring the Mongoose currency module and then declaring the currency type. So that is how you would use the currency type in our application. So we'll say price type currency and um, required is true. And then I can also specify the minimum value, which would be zero. And then the next field is the featured field, which would be of the type Boolean and the default value will be false. So if I if my document is missing that, then the default value will be added in into the document here. So notice that I have now expanded the dish schema by adding in the image type, the category, the label, the price, and the feature to match the structure of the dish document example that I just showed you earlier. So now my dish schema is all ready to be used. So let's now start working on my router. So where is the router? You recall that the router that supports the REST API endpoints for the slash dishes, REST API endpoint and slash dishes slash dish ID endpoint is in the dish router. So we will go to dishrouter.js file and then we'll extend the dishrouter.js file. So in the dish router, along with express and body parser, I'm going to now include mongoose. So we'll say require mongoose. And then we will require dishes model. Where is the dishes model? It is in dot dot slash models slash dishes. So it is in the, so notice that we are in the routes folder. So you need to go up one level and then go into the models folder and then the dishes.js file is right there. So that is what we are importing here. So now I can, update my dish router to be able to interact with the server using Mongoose, with the MongoDB server using Mongoose. And we have already imported the dishes model into my dish router. So it is time for me to go and update all the methods in here. So for the dish router, 
the uh, slash, which means that the slash dishes endpoint. I'm going to remove this all from here. Instead, I'm going to explicitly declare all the various endpoints, the get, put, post, put, and delete. I will handle each one of them independently. So in the get method, I'm going to cut that out. And then in the get method, what do I need to do? Recall that we had the find uh, method from Mongoose, which allows us to find all the dishes. So when you do a get operation on the slash dishes endpoint, you're expecting all the dishes to be re returned to the client uh, in response to the get request. So I'm going to go to dishes and then perform the find operation. So now you see that from my Express server, I am accessing my um, MongoDB. So we'll do a find and in the find, I'm going to now handle the request. So I can say dishes find, since that is going to return a promise, then I can handle that inside here. So I'll say dish. And so if the promise resolves correctly, I'll get it in the then. And so I'll say dish. And then so we'll, we'll handle res status code is 200. And then we'll say res set header content type. And since we are going to be returning the value as a JSON, so we'll set that to application JSON. And OK, this will return an array of dishes. So I'll simply say dishes. And then we'll say res.json. So the res.json will take as an input a JSON string and then send it back over to my uh, client. So when you call res.json and supply the value, and then it will simply uh, take the parameter that you give here and then send it back as a JSON response. It will put this dishes into the body of the reply message and then send it back to the server. Okay. Now uh, we can handle the error here by saying next error. We can also do a catch error just for the sake of uh, completeness. I'm just going to put both of these into place here so that both will be handled as such. So if an error is returned, then that will simply pass off the error to the overall error handler for my application and then let that worry about how to handle the error. So we're going to be sending it over to that. So you see how I am using the find operation and then performing the request here. Now, for the post, as you would have already, already expected, I'm going to do dishes dot create because we're going to be creating a new dish here. So recall that we are already seen the dishes create method usage earlier. And remember that the body parser would have already parsed the whatever is in the body of the message and then loaded it on to the body property of the request. So I'm just going to take the request body and then pass it in as a parameter to my dishes create method and handle the return value. So we'll say then and this would return a dish and we'll handle that in here. So we'll say if the dish is returned correctly and if this dish is posted correctly, we'll say res. Okay, let's do a console log for our own usage. On the server side, we'll do a console log saying dish created dish here. So let's log that dish to the console. And then we'll say 
these two rest status code we'll just copy that code and then paste it in there and in this case we are returning the dish here the dish that is coming as a parameter here and then let the server print out this value uh, the client deal with that value on the client side whatever is returned in the dish now also we will add in this error and then the catch so this is how we handle the post for the put because put is not allowed so we're going to leave it as such for delete we are going to be deleting all the dishes so we'll say dishes remove this is essentially a dangerous operation so we are removing all the dishes from the server and so we will say dishes remove then and the then will get some response so we'll just say resp here and the way we would handle that response is simply to take that value and then return it to the client so we'll say res status code 200 content type application json and then we'll simply send the response back to the client and we will handle the error just like we did earlier that is the delete operation so you see that now we are doing the get post put and the delete operation now we're going to be continuing the same with the slash dish id endpoint so in this case we are specifically modif uh, uh, getting a specific dish we are going to be um, returning that specific dish value so in the get what we do is we will say dishes find by id so the find by id is a method that is available from mongoose as well as the mongodb driver so we'll say rec params dish id recall that we already know that the uh, dish id is present in the params property we have already learned about this earlier so we'll say find by id rec params dish id and then the then and uh, the else so i'm just going to copy the then and else from uh, right there and then come down to the dish router and then simply paste that in there and so we'll say res status code 200 um, application json res dot json dish and then the error handle for the post obviously we are uh, um, not going to be handling the post for a slash dish id endpoint so we're going to be leaving it as such for put for put we are going to be updating a specific dish which is identified by its dish id so this is where we will use dishes find by id and update so this is the method that we're going to be using find by id and update and this takes as the param first parameter rec, rec params dish id and the second value is the set and the update will be in the body of the message so i'm just going to retrieve that from the rec body 
and then also the other flag that I'm going to have, say we'll say new true, so that this find by ID method will return the updated dish as a um, JSON string uh, in the reply. So that is what I'm going to be getting here. And then when that value comes in, I'm just going to take the dish and then simply return the dish to the client side. So we'll say rest.json and uh, dish, and then we'll handle the error correspondingly. And finally, for the delete, for the delete again, the corresponding method that we are going to be using is the Mongoose method called find by ID and remove. So you can see that we have this method called find by ID and remove. And this find by ID and remove will take rec.params.dish ID because that's the dish that we are trying to remove. And then when this is deleted, so just like we handled this here, so I'm just going to copy this code from the dish dishes remove. This is the same thing that I'm going to be doing here also. So find by ID and remove and whatever response I get, I'm going to return it to my client. With this, we have updated the dish router. Let's save all the changes that we have done so far. And then we'll go and start up our server and then see what it does. So going to the terminal or the command window, start the server. So I'll say npm start. And the server is now up and running. We're going to be using the postman to communicate with this server. So let's go to postman and then perform certain operations. So here you see my postman up and running here. So I'll let me do a get operation on the localhost 3000 slash dishes. So when you do a get operation, as you see, it'll return an empty string. My database is now empty, so I don't have anything there. So I'm just going to be returned an empty string. Let's post it. Let's post a dish. Okay, so when you post a dish, obviously in the body, you will be enclosing a dish and the body will be set to be the application JSON type. Now, to post a dish, um, I have already given you the db.json file uh, in the exercise resources. So just open the db.json file and then copy the very first dish from there and then we'll, we'll paste it in here and then post that dish. So uh, let me go to the db.json file. Let me copy the very first dish from here. So I'm just going to copy that dish the entire dish all the way up to there. And then I'm going to post this dish. This contains a lot of the fields that we have here already. Let's post this dish to the server and see what happens. So coming back to the postman, in here, in the form data, in the body, let me paste the dish into place. So we have the full details of the dish there. Let's post this dish to the server. And then once the dish is posted to the server, you see that the postman has, okay, let me just shrink this. And then you see at the bottom that this particular dish has been posted to the database, to the, to the database, to the MongoDB database by my server. So you see that the returned value here shows when the dish was inserted into the server. And so you have the created at and updated at added there. You see that the remaining fields are all stored there. Note particularly how the price value is being stored there. Uh, this is how currency stores the price value. And then so when you get the return value, you need to interpret this appropriately on your client side, what that means. 
Note also that the ID has been added to my dish. And for each comment itself, because each of the comments is itself is a sub document, you have the updated and then created and added, and the ID for each of the comments also added in there automatically by my database. There you go. So now this dish has been added to my database. Let's again perform the get operation. And obviously at this point, the server should return that one particular dish that has been added in. And so it'll return an array of dishes here. So as you can see, it returns an array of dishes. Of course, this array contains only one dish. So that particular dish has been returned here. So far, so good. So let's do a put on the dishes and see what happens. When you do a put, obviously it says put operation not supported on dishes. As we expect, let's do a delete. Doing a delete operation, it returns this response saying n is equal to one, okay, one, meaning that it has deleted one dish. Let's now again perform a get operation. And then you would see that my dishes are empty as we expected. So you see that the get put post and delete operations are all working correctly. Now, let me post the dish again to the server because I want to have one dish in the server. So let me post that dish and you would notice that the ID has now changed. So let me select that ID and then we will do a get with the ID in place. When you do a get with the ID in place, you see that it returns that specific dish as you expected, right? Let's go to the terminal and see what is being printed on the terminal or your command window. So going to the terminal or your command window, you see that it is printing out all these things on the command window. So when we did the first get operation, it says get dish. So this is again, Morgan, uh, doing this work for you. It is printing out, tracing this information and it says dish created and then that particular dish information has been printed. And then it says post dishes, get dishes. And then when you did a put, it returned a 403 there and you again created dishes and so on. So you see that your server is actually doing all the work and these things are getting inserted into your MongoDB database as you expected. Now, getting back to the uh, postman, let's do a post on the dishes. Now this is not supported on the server side. So your server should say post operation is not supported on that particular endpoint as you may expect it. Let's do a put operation on that. When you do a put operation, what I'm going to do in the put operation is that I'm going to be replacing the label in there. So in my body of the message, so recall that uh, if you look at uh, the db.json file, the label for that would be new. And so I'm going to change that label to hot. And since this needs to be JSON, so label also in quotes. JSON label hot and then let's do a put up on that particular endpoint and the put operation was successful and so you see that when the put operation was done then you would notice that the label now has changed from new to hot here and note in particular created at value and the updated at value. So notice that this record was created at this time point and was updated a little bit later. So the update was done by the put operation that I just performed on that particular dish. Let's delete the dish. This is allowed. So we'll delete the dish and then the dish will be deleted and the value will be returned. Now, if you do a get operation 
on the dishes endpoint, you will see that this will return an empty. So you have just managed to delete the dish from our database. What I'm going to do is to perform a get operation on a non-existent dish and see what happens. And when I perform a get operation on a non-existent dish, it returns null because that dish doesn't exist, right? So it returns a null value saying that the dish doesn't exist. Now, let me perform a get operation on a non-object ID and see what happens. And it returns, as you see, let me preview that. So it says cast to object ID failed for value here at path. So obviously this is not a valid object ID. So I just managed to, to delete part of it and then perform the operation. And so it returns an error saying, so you see, it says 500 internal server error. The server was not able to handle this and then return this value here. So it says, no, this is not allowed. So because that that is not a valid um, object ID. So even errors are handled appropriately as you see here. So let me again do a get operation on the dishes and your server is still running and it will return an empty value here. So we have seen how by modifying our um, REST API server to be able to interact with the MongoDB server, we now have a full-fledged REST API server which is able to store and retrieve and perform various operations on the data that is stored on my MongoDB server. With this, we complete this exercise. So in this exercise, we have seen how we are able to interact with our uh, REST API server and in turn with the MongoDB server. And then we are leveraging the MongoDB server to store and retrieve data from the server. We are able to interact from our Express um, application with the MongoDB server using Mongoose. This is a good time for you to do a git commit with the message Express REST API with Mongoose part one.